now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore in the story of Dr. Kildare from 71 years ago, June 15, 1951, in an episode of the show in which Dr. Kildare becomes a patient. Thank you for tuning in on this Wednesday, and you know what that means. It is the 15th day of June, 166th day of the year, 199 days remaining until we get to 20. 23. King John of England put his seal on the Magna Carta on this date in 1215. Colonists in North America completed Jamestown Fort in Jamestown, Virginia. Benjamin Franklin experimented by flying a kite during a thunderstorm on this date in 1752. The result, a little spark that showed the relationship between lightning and electricity. In 1775, George Washington appointed head of the Continental Army by the Second Continental Congress. Happy birthday, Arkansas. You became the 25th State of the Union in 1836. In 1844, Charles Goodyear granted a patent for the process that strengthens rubber. In 1864, in order to establish a military burial ground signed by Secretary of War Edwin M. Stanton, the location later became known as Arlington National Cemetery. Henry O. Flipper became the first African American to graduate from West Point on this date in 1877. In 1898, the House approved the annexation of of Hawaii back in 1898. 1909, Benjamin Scheib patented the Quark Center baseball. And in 1911, the Computing Tabulating Recording Company incorporated in the state of New York, the company later renamed International Business Machines, IBM. President Wilson signed a bill incorporating the Boy Scouts of America in 1916. In 1919, Captain John Alcock, Lieutenant Arthur W. Brown won $50,000 for successfully completing the first nonstop transatlantic plane flight. In 1944, American forces began their successful invasion of Saipan during World War II. The last French troops left Algeria in 1964. It was on this date in 1969, Laugh-In's Country Cousin Hee Haw premiered on CBS. It ran for two years there until CBS had their, uh, what was it, the, the, where they got rid of all the shows that had any sort of rural appeal. But it ran another 20 years in first-run syndication. King Hussein of Jordan married 26-year-old American Lisa Hallaby, who became Queen Noor. In 1981, the U.S. agreed to provide Pakistan with $3 billion in military and economic aid from 1982 to 1987. In the capital city of Stanley, the Falcons' War ended in 1982 as Argentinian troops surrendered to the British. Uh, the U- <laughs> had such a big uh, fight over such a little island, but they were British subjects. And they wanted to stay British, and Argentina wanted the land. So what can I say? In 1983, the Supreme Court reinforced its position on abortion by striking down state and local restrictions on abortion. Of course, we've seen that pretty much reversed in the Supreme Court. Uh, Pravda, the Communist Party newspaper, reported on this date in 1986 that the chief engineer of the Chernobyl nuclear plant dismissed for mishandling the incident at the plant. It was ruled by the Supreme Court on this date in 1992 that the government could kidnap criminal suspects from foreign countries for prosecution. Oh, and a horrible incident on this date in 1992. Vice President Dan Quayle instructed the students to spell potato with an E on the end during a spelling bee. He had relied on a faulty flashcard that had been written by the student's teacher. 
Israel and the Vatican established full diplomatic relations in 1994. In 1999, South Korean naval forces sank a North Korea torpedo boat during an exchange in the disputed Yellow Sea. A divided Supreme Court made it easier for police to barge into homes and seize evidence without knocking or waiting in 2006. On that same date, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates said he would transition from day-to-day responsibilities at the company to concentrate on the charitable work of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It was on this date in 2007 that Bob Barker ended his 35-year run as host of the CBS game show The Price is Right, the second full-time host of that game show, I should point out, because the, technically that was the new Price is Right. The original Price is Right, Bill Cullen. Uh, Nick Walenda became the first person to successfully tightrope tight rope walk directly over Niagara Falls in 2012. Passing away on this date in history, uh, Meredith Wilson, playwright, composer, conductor. Of course, you've heard him uh, perform well on Burns and Allen. Uh, Singer, actress Ella Fitzgerald, pro wrestler Dick Murdoch, Hume Cronin uh, with Jessica Tandy. Such a great couple and good actor on his own. Casey Kasem passing away on this date as well. Kirk Kikorian and Franco Zeffirelli, all passing away on this date in history. This is the birth date of David Rose and his orchestra, probably best known for his hit single, The Stripper, but also all the music that you heard on the Red Skelton show. Also born on this date, Errol Garner, Misty, uh, Mario Cuomo, Waylon Jennings, Harry Nilsson, and Jim Varney. Hey, Varney. Hey, ain't you a little heavy to be working up here? You know what you need, Bernie? The sum is Purity Milk's new Purity Light. It's 99% fat-free, Bernie, and protein-fortified. And that's what you need to be, Bernie. 99% fat-free and fortified. And that way, these roof beams won't buckle like this when you're up here working! He was known as Ernest P. Worrell in a whole bunch of silly movies, Jim Varney, born on this date in history. Uh, Let's see, who else is celebrating birthdays today? Uh, The musician from the band Kansas, Steve Walsh, 71 today. Somebody's knocking, can I let him in? Uh, Terry Gibbs, 68 years old. Jim Belushi, 68 years old today. From Airplane, Julie Haggerty is 67. From Mad About You and Twister, Helen Hunt, 59. From Friends, Courtney Cox, 58, no relation. From uh, the Friday series of movies, rapper Ice Cube is 53. From King of Queens and anti-Scientologist Leah Remini is 52. From Doogie Howser, MD, and How I Met Your Mother, Neil Patrick Harris, 49. And the WWE's Bailey is 33. Those some of the people celebrating the 15th day of June is their birthday. And if this is your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you! And from 71 years ago, June 15th, 1951, the story of Dr. Kildare. I'm Wyatt Cox, and thank you for joining us on this Wednesday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. You ever make a change and then think, why didn't I do this years ago? Well, that's how people feel about switching to MediShare for their health care, especially now with inflation the way it is. People are very happy with the savings Most families save about $500 a month when they switch. It's a huge help when prices are going up so fast in so many other areas. And MediShare's customer satisfaction rate is double that of health insurance. It's just a different experience, and people really like that. MediShare is an alternative to health insurance. It's a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills, and it's been going strong for over 25 years it really is the gold standard, the most trusted name in healthcare sharing. Find out why people love it. Find out why they rave about the customer service and find out how good it feels to save some money right now. They're super easy to talk to. Here's the number, 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. 
Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore reprising their screen roles in the story of Dr. Kildare, 71 years ago today, June 15, 1951. The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my people. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. Now the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Uh, take a look at the road map in the glove compartment, will you, Dr. G? I think we turn off the side road soon. Side road? Mm-hmm. You mean there's actually a side road off this wagon trail? <laughs> I'll admit these desert roads aren't exactly super highways, but this country doesn't call for four-lane traffic. Come on, get the map out, will you? Uh, how can I even read the confounded thing with the wind tearing it out of my hand? All right, I'll stop. Uh, Fine vacation I let you talk me into, Jimmy Fildare. Touring the Arizona desert in a convertible. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll have me riding a hot rod. N- not that uh, this thing isn't hot enough. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. G, but we'll be out of the heat in another hour or so. We've been 40 miles of the place. Yeah, if you were a sailor instead of a doctor, you'd be the type that hires a rowboat on leave. I thought this was a vacation. It is, but I do want to see the new sanitarium, and so do you. Uh, you know you do. Uh, Let's see. Here's the last town we passed through. Uh-huh. We must be about here on the map. Mm-hmm. And here's the turnoff we want. About six miles farther, I'd well, say. Well, let's go, let's go. I'm cooked half through. I should be well done by the time we get there. Jimmy, what's the matter with you? I don't know. I, I just feel a little dizzy. Nauseated. Jimmy, you're sick. Oh, no, no. It's just the heat, that's all. It is not. Same thing happened to you yesterday when we were coming through the mountains. It wasn't hot up there. I'm all right. I... It, it's passing away now. You better let me drive the rest of the way. Oh, no. Go on, slide over. I'll come around. Better get some rest when we reach the sanitarium. I'm going to give you a good going over and find out what's wrong with you. All right, I tell you, I'll feel fine by the time we get there. Don't seem to be anybody here, Jimmy. No? Well, it's Sunday, and that explains why the workmen aren't around, but Dr. Yeah. Simmons should be here. This is his baby. Place is almost complete. Yeah. Looks like it'll be ready for use in another few weeks. Just a matter of general finishing and installing of equipment. Dr. Simmons must be around. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Now, uh, wait. Well, <laughs> you there, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. Oh, this is a surprise. Uh, hi, Dr. Simmons. Hello, Simmons. Well, what brings you here? Well, theoretically, we're on a vacation. But Kildare's been snooping into your letters to me. Oh. So he brought me here for a cook's tour of the place. Well, he never had a better idea. Now, you're looking fine, Leonard. Just keep going, don't you? Like the old man of the sea. <laughs> old man of the sea. Well, you could use a sea around this desert. <laughs> you wouldn't say that if you'd ever seen one of our flash floods. How are you, Jimmy? Oh, just fine, Dr. Simmons. Famous last word. Just look at him and you can see how fine he is. Yeah, he's right, Jimmy. You don't look well. Now, don't you start to. I've been working hard, that's all. The trip has been exhausting. Now, are we going to talk about the state of my health, or are you going to show us what we drove 2,000 miles to see? Don't worry. You're going to see every inch of it. Uh, good. Over and over again. <laughs> This is one dream that I want to share. Come on. Mm. When will you be ready for patients? Oh, about 15th of next month. Mm. That's when the staff will come in. 
It'll be the equipment is stored in those rooms to the left. Just a matter of setting up shop when the glasswork and the windows are finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me show you this. Through here. Hmm. Well, what do you think? Simmons, I'd say that this is the best solarium I've ever seen. That goes double for me. It's marvelous, Dr. Simmons. Yeah, the sun is life to a tubercular patient. You wait until this is finished. The glass we're installing has been designed to admit the greatest possible degree of ultraviolet. You'll save a lot of lives here, John. Now, how long can you stay? Oh, two or three days, if there's a place for us. Well, a couple of the rooms are completed. I wanted to move in as soon as possible. Uh, I won't guarantee the meals, though. I can do some pretty grim things to food cooked over a Bunsen burner. Hey, sounds <laughs> like an interesting diet. You got customers. Good. Dr. Simmons, oh, would you mind showing me to my room now? I, I think I'd like to take a little nap until this afternoon. Confounded, Jimmy, you are sick. No, no, I'm just tired, Dr. Just Lee. being I... tired doesn't make a man turn white and break into sudden perspiration. After your nap, you're getting a check -up. Dr. G, when you entered the medical profession, the world lost a great pearl diver. What are you talking about? Uh, if I remember my slang correctly, pearl diver means dishwasher. And you are doing very well. Well, I'd do better if you two would keep quiet and speed up the drying. I've got a patient I'm itching to get at. Oh, no, you haven't. I've had a little rest, and I feel fine. Yeah. Hey, it does look a lot better at that, Leonard. You've got a little color. Color. Half your patients you'll treat will have good color, too. That doesn't prove anything. The way I feel proves enough for me. I'm all right. Yeah. I'm inclined to agree with him. Any man who can survive my recipe for chili and beans must be in good condition. There you are, Dr. G. Overruled. But I promise you that if I ever do need help, you'll get my business. Well, that sounds fair enough, Leonard. At least kill theirs. Dr. Simmons. Dr. Simmons, come quick. You've got to come quick right away, please, yeah. before it's too late. Oh, Pedro, what's the matter? Oh, my little Rosie, she's dying. Mm -hmm. hey, senores, excuse me, please. I, I must take the doctor. Ah, no, no, no. Calm down, Pedro. <laughs> These gentlemen are doctors, too. Oh, then you come too, please, senores. Rosie's so sick, she can't hold up her head. She's just laying there behind the house, the poor little thing. Well, it sounds serious, Dr. Simmons. Oh, he's very serious, doctor. Please, my wife stays with her while I come for help. You say she's lying outside the house? Couldn't you carry her inside? How can we carry her, senor? My wife and I, we can lift little Rose. You can't lift her. Uh, before you get the wrong idea, I'd better explain something. Little Rosie isn't a child. She's Pedro's burro. Burro? See, si, see. Si. Dr. Rosie can't help that she's a burro. Just like she can help that she's sick. Oh, please, senores, you've got to help me. We need her. She carry everything on her back for us. If anything happened to Rosie, then my poor wife, she got to carry everything. <laughs> well, it sounds like we really must help her. For your wife's sake, if not for Rosie's, I'll go with him and have a look at the animal. Are you serious, Jimmy? Well, why not? The animal is important to him. Uh, might make medical history of that. One stubborn donkey treating another. <laughs> <laughs> the subtlety of that last remark is not lost, Dr. G. Where's your place, Pedro? Yeah, only six miles, senor. If we run, we'd be there in an hour. Oh, that sounds like great exercise, but do you mind if we take my car instead? Uh, I don't trust cars. But mm -hmm. for Rossi, I go with you. Yeah, you don't know how brave that is, Kildare. By the time you drive over the road to his shack, if, if you can call it a road... You might wish you'd tried running. Well, maybe so. Anyway, I'll borrow that field kit, Dr. Simmons. I may need it if the burrow's really sick. Not only that, but it'll protect you from Dr. Gillespie. He's got a surgical glint in his eye. <laughs> well, I'll give your regards to Rosie. <laughs> What's the matter with her, Doctor? Why she don't get up? How old is this animal? Oh, she's only 20. She's young. Young? 20-year-old burrow equals the age of a man of 80 or more. She's just tired, tired of working. Uh, she was tired of working when she was two years old. She's even more tired than Pedro. Well, a shot of vitamin B might help, but this old girl's ready for pasture. I'll give her... <laughs> oh, doctor, what's oh. wrong? Why your face gets so white? I don't know. Here. Doctor, please let me help you. Thank you, Pedro. Can you get me into your house? Easy. Quick, Maria. You take his other round. Easy. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. You got great pain, Doctor. Here, please. Oh. You sit down. My stomach, I guess. That 
chilly or something. Didn't go very well with the bumpy ride we had coming out here. Do you want some water, Doctor? Please, I... Oh, I'll be able to drive back as soon as the pain goes away. It'll... It'll go in a few minutes. not better, Doctor? No, I'm afraid not. It's becoming more localized. Can either of you drive an automobile? No, senor. No, we never learn. Doctor, maybe if you tell Pedro how to drive it, he can take you back? I'm afraid we're too late for that. I couldn't possibly stand the trip over that road. Well, what do you want us to do, senor? Well, one of you will have to go on foot. Dr. Simmons has a car at the sanitarium, doesn't he? Yes, si, yes, si, of course. My stomach muscles are getting rigid. Oh, Doctor, why you press your stomach when it brings you such pain? Just making sure of what's wrong with me. Pedro, get Dr. Gillespie from the sanitarium and bring him here as fast as you can. Hurry, Pedro. See, I got one. Oh, Pedro. Huh? You'd better bring that medical kit in from the car before you go. And... See, si, si. uh, Tell Dr. Gillespie that I'll have to have surgery in two hours at the most. I've got acute appendicitis. <laughs> We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. June 15, 1951, the story of Dr. Kildare on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. No offense, but are you a little fat when you look in the mirror? How would you like to learn the secrets to lose three to five pounds a week easily without joining the gym or going through any crazy diets? It's called Body Sculpt by Med Diet. For the last two decades, we've been helping people just like you that have pounds they want to shed. We've helped millions of people lose thousands and thousands of pounds over the years. And now it's your turn. Learn the secrets of how to lose weight with one simple phone call. You'll see an amazing difference in a matter of days. Don't believe us. We'll offer you a money-back guarantee. If you're ready to start losing weight right now, Call right now to learn more about your risk-free order to Body Sculpt. Call for your risk-free offer. 800-738-5332. 800-738-5332. That's 800-738-5332. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain Magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Wednesday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox and an episode this hour of the story of Dr. Kildare starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Kildare has appendicitis. An episode originally broadcast on Friday, June 15, 1951. In the newspapers of that Friday, 71 years ago, these were some of the headlines. <laughs> Former Secretary of Defense Lewis Johnson said yesterday, we are just drifting in the Korean War, and declared that part of the MacArthur program may have to be adopted to end the bloodletting. General Douglas MacArthur, ousted as Supreme Far East Commander, has called for bombing enemy targets in Manchuria, a naval blockade of Red China, and the use of Chinese nationalist troops in the struggle against communist aggression. 
Johnson also testified that the Truman administration at the time reflected seeming hostility toward Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek's government. He said that when he was Defense Secretary Chief in the 1940s and 50s, uh, 49-50 I should say, the military high command was seeking to speed up aid to the nationalists, but he declared, and quoting, without being able to give you the details, the definite feeling I had, there was a dragging of feet, an effort to delay. Meanwhile, Douglas MacArthur, the general, declared last night there's a campaign underway in the U.S. to prevert the truth and to confuse the people. He said a feeling of fear is being generated throughout the nation by constant but false propaganda that we are weak, that we are not prepared to defend ourselves against any who may attack. And he added that there can be no sure incitation to attack on the U.S., then the lack of confidence Americans show in themselves. 30,000 clothing manufacturers were directed by the government yesterday to figure new price ceilings for everything from underwear to overcoats. Consumers may get a few breaks under the new regulation, the Office of Price Stabilization said, but on the whole, the price of a full wardrobe will remain about the same. Hitherto, the entire wearing apparel industry has been subjected to the general price freeze ordered last January. Now OPS has instructed manufacturers to figure out specific ceilings based on prices during base periods before the Korean War, plus specified cost increases since then. The new price tags must be out by August 15th. President Truman last night assailed special interests for opposing economic controls and declared that if inflation wrecked the American economy, the Kremlin would win the whole world without firing a shot. In a speech to the nation, the president said this is a time of national danger. Congress, he said, should get busy and pass an anti-inflation program that will really hold down prices. At the minimum, he said, strong controls will be needed for two more years to support a mobilization effort designed to prevent the Soviet rulers from starting a third world war. Irate farmers and cattle feeders hurled boos and catcalls at Michael V. DeSalle yesterday, but the government price chief stubbornly defended his price rollbacks and said the cattle market has returned to normal. There was a slump in cattle receipts from feeders and farmers following the imposition of a 10% rollback, but receipts have been about normal for the last three days. Some 300 cattlemen from Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, and other points faced a sow in a hostile mood in a meeting called to air their problems and grievances under controls. The House will consider next Wednesday a record $7.2 billion tax increase, which cleared the Ways and Means Committee yesterday. There's a good chance the bill can be sent to the Senate by the end of the week. Iran's share of the profits on British-produced Iranian oil must be forthcoming before talks on the new oil nationalization law can start. That, according to the Iranian government, telling a negotiating team of British-owned Anglo-Iranian oil company the British have until 8 o'clock Sunday to reply. Aspirin at four and a half cents a hundred tablets, the hot item in New York's price war yesterday. The makers of Bayer Aspirin accused the warring department stores of jungle tactics. And in Reno, Nevada, seven policemen were assigned yesterday to guard movie actress Rita Hayworth and her baby Yasmin. The strong guard placed at Miss Hayworth's fashionable residence at nearby Glenbrook at the insistence of District Attorney Jack Streeter, who said he feared for the safety of Rita and the child. Streeter, recently returned from Miami, said that while there he met hoodlums who expressed too much interest in both Rita and the residence where she awaits developments in her pending divorce suit against Ali Khan. One hoodlum, Streeter said, remarked to him, not realizing that he was a law enforcement officer, that little Yasmin would be worth a lot of money. And though some of the day's top news stories, as reported in the newspapers of Friday, June 15th, 1951, on your radio, the story of Dr. Kildare, the conclusion next on this Wednesday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? 
You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. We head back 83 years on Thursday's Classic Radio Theater for an episode of Death Valley Days from June 16, 1937, Shoe Fly. A tough old lady runs her own claim in the Panamint Mountains with a harsh word and a shotgun. That'll be coming up on Thursday's Classic Radio Theater, but now the conclusion of the story of Dr. Kildare from June 15, 1951. Now we continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Simmons, Dr. Globes. Pedro, you're exhausted. I I got to bring you. What's the matter? Why didn't you bring Dr. Kildare? The great pain in his stomach. He said for you to come right away to make the operation. Appendicitis? Si, si, senor. I knew I should have examined him, the young fool. He had all the symptoms. He couldn't even drive by, senor. I come on foot. Come on. I have my car. We can get to him in 20 minutes. Yeah. We'll need equipment. The kit he took is complete. Everything we need will be there. Now, as soon as we get... Oh, senor. What's the matter? What are you stopping for? We have to stop, Leonard. Can't you hear that? You mean you want to wait for a rainstorm to pass when Kildare's appendix is liable to burst any minute? This isn't just a rainstorm. It's a flash flood. We can't possibly get through to him. Well, I'm going to get through to him. It's no use, Leonard. Open the door and look out there. Every hollow and gully will be a raging river in less than two minutes. Ah, rain is rain. <laughs> Grab him, Pedro. See, no, doctor, please, no. Let me go. Leonard, stop. Look out there. Look. It's like a waterfall out there. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Uh, how long it'll last, John? Storm? Yeah. Probably less than five minutes. But after that, eight or ten hours before we could even start. Uh, well, he might be all right for that long. No, senor. He say two hours at the most, and I leave him more than an hour ago. You don't take another one of the little pills to hurt the pain. No, if I deaden it too much, go to sleep. I'd be finished. There'd be no chance. Doctor, the storm, I don't know how to say it. I know, it. Maria. It's a flash flood. I've heard of them. How long before they'll be able to get through? It will be night soon. Not before morning. Huh. Marie, how do you like the house at night? We have a lamp, but there's no fuel. No fuel? But I can make a light for you. I have the holy candles. Good. Maria, I've heard that Mexican women have great courage. Is that true? It is our pride, senor. Why do you ask? You know I may die before help arrives. Oh, no, senor doctor. There's only one way to prevent that. Whether or not I do will depend on you being very calm. I will do as you say. I can't live unless my appendix is removed, Maria. I'll have to remove it. Myself. But I can't do this without your help. But how can you do this to be operated on one must be in a deep sleep? No. I can use a local anesthetic. It'll help some. The pain will be very great. And you must not be frightened. Especially you must not faint. I won't faint. You can depend on me. I've never depended on anyone more. Okay. 
help me with these gloves, Maria. And be careful, don't touch anything that hasn't been sterilized in the hot water. I almost forget. Now, spread the instruments on the clean towel there beside me. The pain you have seems to be better. Maybe you don't have to go on with it. No, no. It's the local anesthetic beginning to take hold. You remember the names of the instruments now? See. Si. Scalpel and the four suits. Yes, and those, those when I call four sutures. See, si. I won't forget. What do you do now with that needle? I give myself an injection of penicillin to prevent infection. Mm. Now, I want you to look at this hypo needle. The one you saw me prepare before. When I start operating, after I make the incision, Maria, I'll be in great pain. Much worse than what I've had before. You understand that? Si, doctor. Now, my greatest danger will be fainting. And there's a better than even chance that I will faint. But if that happens, senor doctor, what can I do? That's what the needle is for, Maria. It's coramine, a heart stimulant. If I pass out, you must inject me with this needle. Doctor, I have never done anything like this before. I don't know how to I do know, it. I know, but don't be afraid of it. Just jab it into my arm. Sink it in good. Push the plunger until it's empty. Oh, but I'm afraid I might hurt you. If I pass out and you don't do it, I will never regain consciousness. This is the one thing I must leave completely up to you, Maria. I will do my best. Good. I'll lie back. Tilt the mirror so I can see what I'm doing. All right. I can't see yet. Tilt it further. Like this? No, further. Here? There, that's it. Do- doctor, how long will it take? I don't know. I may finish in 15 minutes. I don't know. I may never finish. All right, Maria. Scalpel, please. <laughs> Gillespie. Oh, Simmons. How about it? Did you get the call through? Yes, the lines weren't damaged, luckily. I contacted the Mercy Hospital in Phoenix. Uh, what do they think of my idea? Well, the storm's over and a helicopter's taking off from the Phoenix airport right now. Ah. They'll pick us up here in about half an hour and fly us out to Pedro mm-hmm. Shack. They don't want to fly me no place. I wait right here till I can walk. Half an hour. I hope Jimmy's all right until we get there. After we operate, we can get him into the hospital at Phoenix for post-surgical care. Post-surgical care isn't our problem. Once the appendix is out, he'll be all right. If it's caught before it ruptures. If it isn't and peritonitis sets in, he'll need plenty of care. Well, I just hope he's trying to rest out there. He must know that we can't get through to him. I only hope he doesn't get panicky. Panicky? (laughs) You don't know Jimmy Kildare like I do. Whatever we find there... It won't be panic. Say, dark, though. Can a helicopter make a night landing? They've got spotlights. They can land any place. Yes. Keep wiping my forehead, please, Maria. All right, Doctor. You all right? I, I think so. Forceps, please. Oh, I dropped it. Never mind. Another one, hurry. I'm almost ready to get the appendix. Wipe my eyes, I can barely see. I still can't see. Is the mirror misted over? No. No, the mirror is all right. Doctor, what's the matter? Slap me, Maria. No, I'm afraid. Slap me. Slap my face down. <laughs> All right. Scalpel, quick. There. I got it. I cut it out, Maria. Not finished yet, though. I must... I must... Senor Doctor! Senor Doctor! Needle, Maria. Coramine hypo. Doctors! Lights just picked up a shack down there, sir. See it? Yes, that's the place, pilot. You can land all right. Cinch. Our altitude's only 200 feet, and it's all flat down there. 
Here we go. Just be a little jolt when we hit. All right. All right, we're down. Let us out. Just lift that latch, Doc. I'll cut the motor. Ah, uh, there's Pedro's wife. Just open the shack door. Senores! Senores, you come like a... How's Dr. Kilday? Where is he? Inside. Ah, yeah. Jimmy. <clears throat> Jimmy, boy. Dr. G. Are you all right, Kildare? Fine. Fine, but only wordy knows. Well, just hold tight till we're ready, Jimmy. We'll have that appendix out in a minute. <laughs> Too late, Dr. G. It's already out. What? And that piece of gauze by the table. Ah, but you couldn't. It's impossible. Oh, I'm not the first. Doctors have done it before. Yeah, in an operating room under ideal conditions with help, but not alone in a place like this. I had no choice, Dr. Gillespie. And I... I had Maria's help. Well, you should have waited. It was an idiotic thing to try. I don't know if it was or not, Dr. Gillespie. Come take a look at this appendix. <laughs> uh, the great horn spoon. Yeah, it's a good thing you did take it out, Jimmy. Another minute could have been too long. Yeah, but he wouldn't let me check him over this morning. Oh, no, no, no. He winds up out here doing it himself. By the way, Dr. Kildare, how's the other donkey you came out to see? Oh, he's old, ready for pasture. Just like you, Dr. G. No, is that so? I'm going to buy Pedro and Maria a new burrow. <laughs> Maria made a mighty brave and efficient nurse when the chips were down. <laughs> I, I'm still sore where she gave me a coramine injection. Doctor, you say stick you hard. So when you faint, I close my eyes and I stick. I'd like to close my eyes and stick them too. Oh, I'll bet you would. <laughs> It'd make you happy. Happy? <laughs> Jimmy, it'd make me feel like a kid again. A kid playing pin the tail on a donkey. And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Dr. G. Car dried out yet? Yep. Uh, we can leave in the morning. Good. Think you can stand the trip? Oh, I'm fine. Fit as a fiddle. I'm ready to get back to work at Blair. The only thing bothering me is how much of a bill to send myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 by the way, reports of your little operation kicked up quite a sensation, Jimmy. Huh? Oh, sure. Here's a wire from a news syndicate. They want you to write your own story. But that isn't enough to make you as cheerful as you seem to be. Yeah. Oh, whenever you chuckle like that, Dr. G, I know there's something pretty nasty coming up. Now, come on, what is it? Oh, nothing. Yes, there is. Ah, oh, no. I, I was just talking to Simmons on the phone. Mm -hmm. He said that Pedro and Maria yes. were delighted with the new donkey. <laughs> yes, they were just delighted. Mm. <laughs> You know what they're going to name him, Jimmy? No. <laughs> Calling him Dr. Kildare. Now, isn't that sweet? Oh, very sweet. But it's likely to create a family feud between Maria and Pedro. Eh, well, what do you mean? Well, I heard you suggesting that name to Pedro, so I had a chat with Maria, and she's calling the burrow Gillespie. Ah. <laughs> you think you're smart, don't you? <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Joel Murcott and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Lillian Baeff, Anthony Barrett, and Wilms Herbert. Dick Joy speaking. From 71 years ago, June 15th, 1951, the story of Dr. Kildare here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. I want to mention that we're coming into the summer months here, and so you're not going to hear a lot of the big, big celebrities that are in radio, but you'll also hear some big-name stars in some of these shows. Uh, I believe we'll get back to our uh, one of my favorite shows and one of our favorite shows, which is uh, Mystery in the Air, starring... Peter Laurie. 
Uh, we'll hopefully get to some of those shows this summer as well. And some other big celebrities who worked summer months sometimes filling in between movies to do great old-time radio shows. So we'll have some of those. But, you know, Fred Allen, Jack Benny, we won't hear much of them during the summer months. That's just the way it worked. Uh, visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. There you can stream our shows on demand. You can learn more about Classic Radio Collecting. You can contact me there. And if you're so inclined, you can buy me a coffee. Although, I won't buy coffee with it. I'll get a Dr. Pepper with it. Because... That's all American, don't you know? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thank this station. Support their advertisers. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.